This is a big books desktop for an insurance brokerage firm. So in this video, I would probably take you from start to finish as you guys set up for QuickBooks for an insurance brokerage firm. And then most importantly, um, I'm going to show you how to track um, premium collections from your clients and then how to treat them in your book up to when you pay the service providers who are the insurance companies. So, but before we get started, it's important for us to quickly set up the basic account. Now, when I created this company, I tagged it XYZ Insurance Brokerage Firm. And then at the point of uh, setting up, I also selected the industry as insurance. So that automatically means that QuickBooks could give me a chart of accounts that is similar to that of an insurance. But then I'm not going to see everything I want, which means I need to build more account heads. So the first thing I want to do right now is um, I want to quickly add my bank account because this is a chart of account. You can see how scanty it is right now. So it's important for us to build our chart of account in this big book. So here I will go to new and then select my bank and then um, quickly set up. So let's say we have um, Zenith bank account and then I'm going to leave the figures at zero because I, there's something I actually want us to understand. So I'll click save and close. And then let's also add another bank account called GTB. So I'll go to of account, new, select bank, and then I'll call it GT Co, GTB holding. Um, here, so I've added Zenith Bank and GTB account. So this is the account we're going to use to receive the money. Now, important another important part of this account again is how do you track your uh, funds that the funds that you have received from your client. So we're going to set up this a client fund account. So I'll go to uh, chart of account, and this time it's a liability. So other current liability. Here, I'll call it client fund account. So this client fund account is used to track all the funds that I've collected from my clients but are yet to be disbursed to the insurance company because at the end of the day, money that comes to me is not my money. So I need to probably account for the portion that is due to the insurance company. So client fund account is important right here. And then I also need to track the payables to the insurance company. So how do you track your payables to the insurance company? You go to your vendors. So the insurance company are the service provider. So you go to vendor, you select new. So let's pick your name insurance. Click OK. And uh, I assume that I'm not owing them. So that's why they impute the balance. So let's add another insurance company. Let's say you have um, another one like ICO. Now, normally QuickBooks will ask you to impute the opening balance. Now, the opening balance here is what is due to ICO as at the point I am setting up QuickBooks. It's important for you to know that. When I'm setting up QuickBooks, do you owe them? Are you owing them? So that's what you impute there. But here we're assuming that it's a fresh insurance brokerage firm because I wanted to understand the processing from start to finish. So I'll assume that I don't owe them. So I'll impute I call and then let's do for the final one. Let's say um we have mutual benefits. Sure. So these are the three service providers that we're working with. ICO, Mutual Benefit, and then Name Insurer. So let's quickly set up our client account. So who are our customers? So let's say we're dealing with our different customers. So the first customer we have here is um, uh, Dangote Limited. They are one corporate customers. And then we also have another customer that we deal with. And then um, you Nigeria here and then we have a an individual customer called mr bamidele yes so you can actually fill in every other information here like as regards the customer's profile so don't just assume that because they are empty then you're not going to fill anything you can fill all the necessary information if you want to but this is just for educational purpose. Now, I've set up three customers, Dangote, Flamu, and 
Mr. Bamindele Olumide. And then I've also added my vendors. Can you see these are my vendors right here? So what exactly am I supposed to do? So now for adding your customers and your vendor, system automatically updates your um, chart of accounts. So you have chart of accounts with your, that's the account payable account payable, so which we're going to treat when we create a B. So set up my account, that's the customer's account. I set up his vendor's account, I've added my bank account. So let's quickly go through the workflow for an insurance company. Now here's the workflow. You, so you receive money from your customer, right? Now that money you receive from your customer is not your money. So you're not supposed to treat that inflow as revenue, which is not correct. So this is what you would do. You go to deposit, record deposit, just follow this guide. Now, where is the money paid into? So let's say customer just paid in 100 million into your account. So deposit to, you select Zeni Bank. Let's say that's the account we used to receive premium right here. So memo, let's say being premium paid. Now, receive from who paid that money? Who paid that money? We receive that money from... Dangote Limited. That's the person that paid that money. And the money was deposited into Zenith Bank. Now, what's the second leg of that account? It's going to be client fund account. Can you see right here? Client fund account. So you can say B premium paid. Now, you can explore the batch transaction window of QuickBooks to get this done immediately without having to post them one after the other. If you go to batch transaction window, company, um, enter batch transaction, on that transaction type, you can select deposit. So you can explore this window to copy from Excel and dump right here. So that makes your job easier, but it's important for us to understand how it works. So here I've received a payment of 100 right here from this particular customer. Now, this is the workflow. The money automatically goes to our bank account, one, and the second leg is your client fund account, which is a liability account. Do you get that? So this is a liability account. So I'll come here and then I'll click on save and close. So if I go to my reports and then check my balance sheet right here, so you will see the two legs, money is in the the 100, uh, 100 million is your Zenith Bank account. And then you have the other leg, which is the client fund account. This is your, your insurance brokerage firm. So you're not supposed to treat this as an income. You're not supposed to treat this as an income. Now, if I go to my PL reports and the profit or loss, so you can see my PL is zero, is zero right here. So that's fine. Now, the other leg now is. I am going to distribute this 100 million to different insurance firm. So I'm going to distribute this 100 million you're seeing here to different insurance firm or insurance providers. So how do I distribute that? Now, uh, like from my understanding and my interaction with um, all of our clients, you see that you're supposed to raise a credit note just to show that, oh, we owe you X, Y, Z amount from this 100 million. So you do this by going to enter bill. Now, enter bill. Now, you now select each of the insurance companies. So, ICO is what well, out of the 100 million, you owe ICO 50. And then let's say the insurance is between ICO and mutual benefits. So, ICO is 50. Then you come to accounts. You then select client fund right here. So, that means client fund account to be debited out of the 100. So, 50 is due to ICO. Right here, can you see? Now, that credit memo that you're sending, which is a document to show that, oh, we owe you X, Y, Z amount, you're supposed to attach it to this document. You're supposed to attach it to this here. This is it here. You're supposed to attach it here. So, like, under your bill, you don't select credit. When you select credit, you assume ICO is owing you. That's what it means. If you select credit, if I select this, I assume ICO is owing me. Do you understand? That's what it means. It means I have paid ICO, but ICO has not provided services. So here, it is important for you to know when to select B and when to select credit. When you select a B, you owe that person at that point. You owe the vendor. When you select credit, the vendor is owing you. More or less like you have a credit with the vendor, just like the way a customer will pay into your account, and then you are yet to provide that service. You're not to 
write the invoice for that amount. So in your book, you will record that you have received payment from your customer, but then it's going to be a credit in the name of that customer until the job is done. That's assuming that you are the direct service provider right here. So in this case, we're going to select B. Now, what's the implication of selecting B? It means that when we save and close, there will be a payable balance to ICO. It's going to be a payable balance to ICO. So here on that memo, that say being the amount due to ICO from from the premium page by XYZ. So that is how you treat this. Can you see here? And then you can even match this particular bill to the customer that paid that money. You can see here. Can match this particular transaction to the customer that paid that money. So this is how you treat it. Now, what's the implication of saving this? It means that my client fund account will reduce by 50, and then my payable account in name of ICO will increase by 50. So let's save and close. So if you go back to report and then check your balance sheet right here. Now you can you see. Our client fund account has reduced by 50. And then you can see account payable to who? ICO. So let's double click this account payable. You can see here, account payable name. You can see here, ICO, right, right here. So it has um, increased by 50. So let's do the same thing for name insurance. So I'll go to enter bill and then name insurance. This will be client fund account, then the balance. Now, out of that 50 million you're seeing here, let's say 30 is due to ICO, uh, to um, name insurance. So here, 30 is due to name insurance. And then who paid the money? This is customer. So you can say being amount due to mutual benefits. So we say we're going to select mutual benefits, not name insurance so here mutual benefits yes the same thing so the credit notes you raised should also be attached to this window just to validate this posting it's just a recommendation and then i'll click on save and close so let's look at the implication of that again so you can see that account payable is now 80 who are we owing 80 double click on this you will see 50 is due to ico and then 30 is due to name did you see that now the other balance, the other balance from this money, which is the 20, 20, um, 20 you're seeing right here, is let's assume is our commission, brokerage fee, is our brokerage fee. So how are we going to treat that? Now, uh, by standard, by standard, let me talk about this. By standard, you are not supposed to use two data files to manage one company. You can use one company file to do that. So. No matter whoever might have created your account, they didn't do right for creating two accounts. This is something you ought to have used one account to do by standard, but then it's fine. If it's giving you what you want or it's helping you to separate your operation, then it's okay. But I'm going to walk around this process is using one account. Now, look at the balance of 20 you're seeing here. So let's assume that there is a commission on this amount. These are commission on this amount, number one. And out of this amount, VAT is also payable. So what are we going to do? We're going to recognize the VAT portion of that amount and also the commission portion of that amount. You go to company, you select make journal entry. So we want to recognize the commission portion of that amount. You go to client fund account. So the client fund account will be um, debited with 20M right here. And then the first one is, is our brokerage brokerage fee so which is an income account so that's an income account insurance brokerage here so let's say this is 18 and then the second one is our VAT payable so the VAT payable is a liability right here so after that, so at the end of the day, your client fund account will be zero. So you come here, you click on this. So let's go back to reports. 
and um, our balance sheet right here. So you can see where's our client fund account zero. That's what you're no longer seeing here. So VAT payable is two. So you see VAT payable. Then if we go to reports and then generate a P and L, can you see brokerage fee of 18 M? So this is the process, this is the workflow that should have been adopted to manage both operations in one company file. So like I said, the first one is to receive the payment deposits. The first leg is your bank. Second leg is your client fund account. Second one now is to distribute the money in that client fund account to different insurance company by using enter bill. So if I go to report and then I select vendor payable balances, can you see here, vendor payable balances, you see you have your ICO 50, you have your mutual benefit assurance of 20 right here. So if how do you pay ICO and how do you pay mutual benefits? It's very clear. You go to pay bills. Pay bills will show you a list of all the bills outstanding. So I can click here, one, click here, two, from which bank are we paying this money from? Then I will click on pay selected bill. Oh, sorry, uh, because I've not logged into this account. That's why. That's why you're saying that. So I need to log in to clear that. But this is a sample account that I'm, I'm using. This is a sample account. This is not like a real account. So when you go to pay bill, you should be able to pay that bill from your bank account. You can see once you select pay bills, you can use. You can pay your bills with a bank account. So it's because you have not logged into this company file. This is a sample company file. That's why Google is asking me to do that. So let's see if, okay, check. So let's say I'm paying with check. So I'll pay with Zenith Bank. You can see here, the balance, my balance of Zenith Bank is 100. Can you see? It's 100. Now, out of this 100, I am paying 80. So let's check here and check here. Cool, cool, cool. Then I'll click on selected view so i've paid these guys i'm no longer owing them again if you go to reports select vendors and vendor balance payable balance summary can you see right here i'm not owing them let's go to our balance sheet to see how it's going to present itself you see now in our balance sheet right now do we have payable to those vendor no because it's been clear the only payable we have right now is VAT, and then you can see as any bank balance has reduced to 20 m did you see that? So if you want to pay VAT to the same thing, you go to your right check. You go to your right check. So we are paying VAT of two. So here you can set up your Federal ILA Revenue Service. F-I-R-S. Here. And then you select VAT payable. And then I can clear this VAT payable balance too. Oh, sorry, that VAT is supposed to come from the Senate, not GTB. So I'll go back here. Yes, because we have 20 million there. Perfect. So if you go to report and then the balance sheet, can you see right now? You can see your bank balance in Zenith Bank is 18, and then which is also equivalent to your net income. So you can see how you've been able to run the process from receiving payments to distributing and then making payment to the vendor and also clearing our VAT payable account. And then you see how it reflects in your report. So this is a summary of how you treat uh, insurance premium as a brokerage firm. So I hope this video guides you. I hope this video clarifies your questions and is able to help you to manage the processes from start to finish.